Welcome to the Punzi Grange. It's spring and we're dealing with weeds today and uh, it's a great weather to get outside and start working in the garden. If you have a vegetable garden especially, you know you're going to be out weeding because you can't really afford to spray things in your vegetable garden. So I'm going to show you some weeds that I've been pulling and what we're going to be dealing with this time of the year in the spring are annual weeds that are called winter annuals that will start germinating in the fall and like the cool weather of our winters and then we'll be going to seed now in the spring so we're going to catch some of those and then we're also going to see biennial weeds as well as perennial weeds which are a little more difficult and we'll explain how to deal with them and what to do with them. First we'll start out with the annual weeds. Uh, there's two annual weeds, the major annual weeds that you see. One is uh, shotweed, it's called shotweed. It's also called, called bitter cress and that's because it's related to cress and probably isn't as tasty as the cress you get in a salad. So that's probably why its other common name is bitter cress. But the reason it's called shotweed, you can already see this early in the season. You can see the flowers, but you can also see the seed pods. Fortunately, the seed pods aren't ripe yet, but when they become ripe and you hit them, all these little seeds, there's little, all little seeds in here. When you hit it, it'll shatter and the, she the seeds will just pop all over the place. That's why now in the Pacific Northwest you're going to see these everywhere. I even see them in the woods when I go hiking. So they're, they're prevalent everywhere. Seeds last for years so it's not like you're ever going to get rid of them but you want to make sure that you clean them up. These can be dug under if you're digging up under deeply because they're annual weeds. Once they're underneath and they don't get any more sun they'll die and decompose and make a good uh, cover crop for the winter if, if you happen to not put a cover crop of your own. Another good weed, annual weed, that you can dig into the soil is chickweed and this isn't flowering yet but you can get a, a close look at that as you can see shot again the root system isn't that deep it's very fibrous just like the shotweed was it's a little wilted because I had pulled it earlier and this also is a, a weed that you can eat if you wanted to some people put it in salads some people make teas out of it it's supposed to be very soothing for your throat to make tea out of a chickweed and again this is another one if you have this you don't have to if you're going to turn over the soil you can just turn it in like a cover crop now we get to the the ones that you're not going to want to turn that you want to want to remove from the garden and not leave any parts of them now we're getting into the weeds let's see what we have in here okay we have ground ivy which is a mint relative and if we get a close look at this we can see it's actually starting to flower and I don't know if you can get a tight shot on that flower. Anybody who knows mints uh, will recognize that little flower with the lip. But this is a weed that will come from seed. It will grow from bits of the root and will spread. You'll see this in your beds as well as in the lawn. And you want to get this up and remove it. Don't uh, leave it out to dry completely if you're going to if you're going to compost it because it'll grow in your compost pile as well so you want to get rid of this root system it's not this one isn't too hard to remove although it will grow along the ground uh, I think the other common name is gill along the ground so I don't know who gill is but someone obviously didn't like him if they named him after this weed or this weed after him let's see and that would that one is a perennial of course we have the dandelion everybody's favorite you can see we're starting to get a flower of the dandelion and the prototypic leaves and the bane of all gardeners, the root system. So when you're getting rid of these, you're going to want to, you can see how far and, and the bigger the weed, you know, sometimes you get ones that are even bigger than this, the bigger the weed, the bigger the taproot and you want to get the taproot out of there. So make sure when you're digging this, you're digging down below and not snapping off the taproot, you'll just get another plant coming up. This one is a biennial and it looks kind of like it, like the dandelion. It's called false dandelion and this is a biennial. First year you'll just see leaves, second year, this is the second year, it will get a flower and root. Again, not quite as bad of a tap root, but still make sure you get all of this stem and little pieces because it will spread underground. Any piece left will sprout again. Then we have sheep sorrel but you can see this one is a running. You can eat this, so if you want to get revenge on your weeds, a lot of these are edible, um, but you can see how this spreads. It's just, 
So you have to make sure you're very careful to get all these little roots. Any bit of this root left behind will sprout a new plant. And finally, next one I got to be careful with. I didn't get the root on this one. This one will also have a large tap root which broke off. But this is Canada thistle. If you get close, actually, that's why I was, I'm being careful because it has spines. Very nasty plant. This one, luckily, I only had one in the whole garden. And I just got to make sure I go back and get the root because it does have a tap. Ow, and that hurt. So yeah, so be careful when you're using these. Wear your gloves. Don't be like me. Don't try this at home. Anyway, until next time, this is Peter Plumsey, Horticulture Guy. Live long and garden.